Hello and welcome to part 2, Hierarchical Task Analysis. Do you remember in part 1 we discussed the basics of sequencing? Well, now we're getting into strategies. So we'll start you off with an introduction of hierarchical task analysis, then explain the process and also show you an example. Are you ready? Hierarchical task analysis. Okay, say it with me. Hierarchical task analysis. Don't let this term scare you. Chances are many of you have already gone through this hierarchical thought process before you, you even started reading this chapter. Hierarchical task analysis assumes that some things must be learned before others. This analysis is effective for learning in the cognitive and the affective domains. As you conduct a hierarchical task analysis, you will find yourself asking one question again and again. What must the learner know in order to do this? And what must the learner know in order to do this? And what must the learner know in order to do this? Now notice this subtlety here. The performance statement in any objective is focused on the do, whereas the question for hierarchical task analysis takes you a level below and asks what learners need to know in order to do what the objective requires. Notice the subtlety? Let's look at an example. So when we started studying learning objectives, I asked myself, what do learners need to know in order to write an objective? The answer was, they need to learn what is performance, condition, and criteria, and all that is included in it. I asked one more question, but the answer to that was, well, I'm sure coming into this course, people know what an action verb means. So I left that out as a prerequisite. That's why you see a red line on your screens. Now, here's the point I want to make. When I started facilitating, did you notice we first took time to define performance, then took up an exercise, then we explained condition, took up an exercise, and then criteria, accuracy, speed, quality, and then took up an exercise on that. So we, we had three learning cycles going on. Once that was completed is when we moved up to write a complete instructional objective. I see some of you smiling. Now you know the secret behind how I've been planning these sessions, right? Hmm. This brings us to the end of part two. I hope you enjoyed learning about hierarchical task analysis. Take a few moments. Jot down a few questions if you like. My name is Ibrahim Chotani, and I will see you in part three where we are going to discuss procedural analysis. Until then, bye-bye.